All right, I want to show you the suspension on a Speed Queen. This is their classic with the transmission. I've already got it opened up here. Uh, you can see how it mounts differently. Uh, the TR5 7 and 3 is all going to have the pump over here. Well, with the transmission, you've got it here on the bottom. Got the control board moved. Just so I can show you this, I want you to see the springs, the suspension on this. I mean, these things are built rock solid. Any other washer uses a completely different philosophy about how to do laundry. And that's one of the things you have to understand about Speed Queen, why they're so great. Um, you look at this, I mean, just imagine an out of balance load. Well, Speed Queen has the technology and the craftsmanship to deal with this situation. Um, most other appliances are built with a uh, suspension that hangs from the cabinet. You know, Speed Queen, you've got a couple sets of these going around that hold the metal tub in place so the inner tub, as it spins, uh, doesn't do any damage. If you've ever had a washer that walks on you, shakes, or ba bangs real bad, it's because the suspension is hanging from the cabinet down instead of this solid metal suspension, this steel suspension. So uh, I'm going to show you a couple others that don't use the heavy-duty springs that use that hanging style. So let's go look at a Whirlpool. All right, we're looking at a Whirlpool here. I know it says Kenmore, but that's a lie. They bought the name. Uh, same thing with Maytag, 2006. They bought the name and ruined it. This is really a Whirlpool appliance. This is one with an impeller instead of the agitator. And um, you can do it with what's called a spring bounce test. You can test the suspension rods by putting the pressure on and seeing what it does. But I want you to see the difference in philosophy. This tub moves all the way around okay you'll never see that in a speed queen uh, but inside of it you've got rods in each corner i'm going to do my best to show you from here and then i'll turn it up on its leg and show you as well these rods hang up in the corner there's a little bit of it right there and uh, here let's just flip it upside down and i'll show you what i'm talking about now look inside this washer you have a rod that's hanging that tub down to a spring. It goes all the way up, comes down to here. This whole thing is built this way, and it's a terrible philosophy when it comes to balancing out a load. You would never see this in a commercial application. In fact, over time, unbalanced loads are going to destroy this machine. It will shorten the life of it. It can damage the floor. It can damage uh, the washer itself and cost you more in service calls. Now let's go look at a GE. This is a 4.8 cubic foot, much larger than your 3.2 on the Speed Queen, but you'll never get the 19 gallons of water that a Speed Queen gets. Uh, the biggest complaint about this is that it never really fills up, it doesn't really get clothes clean. Again, we're dealing with the philosophy of laundry. Had a lot of people complain about these. It just, well, I want to put it clothes all the way up to here okay well good luck with that because you'll never get water all the way up to here you need a speed queen if you really want to get your clothes clean and you don't want service calls constantly now again we're talking about the suspension so let's set this back and we'll take a look let me get my flashlight out so you guys can see it well and again we're dealing with a suspension rod philosophy it's the same exact concept as what we saw in the Whirlpool. And uh, why would you hang a bucket of water and then try to balance it? Also notice the plastic tub, smaller motor. There's a lot of disadvantages to this system. Much smaller pump compared to a Speed Queen. The truth about laundry is if you want the best, get a Speed Queen. There's no other way. It's the best investment for your money. The problem with most washers today is it's not an investment. In fact, it's a liability. They only warranty it for one year. All right? Now imagine a seven-year warranty on a washer. Now, this is the TR7. More specifically, they call it the TR7003. One of the biggest questions I hear about Speed Queen is, will it do a king-size comforter? When you turn it on... So this is not the largest of king size comforters, but it's not the smallest either. I'm not cherry picking. This is an actual comforter that my family uses. But I wanna point out how you load it. I do think it's important to consider how we 
take care of our clothes. It's an investment. I know it's not a huge investment, just as much as our appliances are an investment. And we spend a lot of money on certain things in our life. But uh, what we spend on an appliance, I mean, some people spend more in fast food in a month at the gas station than what they spend on their appliance. I'm going to try to balance it out before we get started. Although it's pretty difficult to get a TR7 totally off balance, it does a really good job. Now you can see it's obviously off balance a little bit. It is a king size comforter after all. And I uh, hope it doesn't make you dizzy. But what's really neat is the frame of this machine is not moving at all. It's not wobbling, it's not wiggling. So the whole purpose of this channel, Insider Appliance Insider, is to help people to save money and hopefully to educate people about some of the problematic machines, but also some of the greater machines. And uh, I'm not just a speed queen diehard or a junkie. Um, I show you the computer boards behind them, like even in the classic. Uh, I just want you to see the truth so you can make an educated decision. And hopefully it saves you some maintenance and saves you some money. Now this thing is humming. Look how fast this thing's going. I wish I had a way to really highlight and emphasize that. It just washed my king size comforter without any problems and it's still moist but I tell you it's fairly dry it doesn't it doesn't feel soaking wet like uh, my washer two or three washers ago did and so let's take this out and take a look I just want to quickly show you behind the scenes of the TC5 what's commonly called the classic some people give me a hard time because I prefer the TR7. I do understand that the Classic has a totally different wash action. I understand that it has a different agitator. I understand it's more aggressive. But when I look at the electronics, when I look at the components behind it, and I compare it to a TR7, I really like the electronics package better on the TR7. Also, a seven-year warranty, lid the legs on a washer. You're not going to find that on another unit. The Classic is probably too aggressive for most people so that is what i recommend for the average person and then it's got these this weak mexican made electronic board behind it i think that's a very weak component of the classic so i just can't get totally behind the classic uh, perhaps you could look into the tv 2000 i'll be doing a review of that pretty soon on the channel let me also show you what the TR7 control board looks like. I want to show you the TR7003. Of course, this is the black version. It has that Rhino liner feel to it. The control panel is the same for the white and the black. I want to show you what all options you have. And I don't want you to be intimidated by it. You turn it on, it will retain the last selection that you chose. So if it was permanent press, that's going to light up by default. The TR7 is the only one that has the rinse and spin, so that's a great option. Uh, it's good that it gives you more options than the others and even has special cycles. Um, so look into that. That's kind of neat. I don't recommend the normal eco for most loads because it just kind of spritzes the water a little bit when it goes to rinse it out. Uh, the permanent press actually does a little bit better of a rinse out so if you're using fabric softener you don't want to use the normal eco because it will stay in your clothes and you'll smell it and feel it uh, which i don't recommend fabric softener anyway it's horrible for your machine and it's not very good for your body anyway so you turn it on it'll retain the last one permanent press is about 36 minutes this one's about i think 45 heavy duty is going to be the longest i think it's about 49. you get the nice gentle ones like the delicate and hand wash Rinse and spin can be very handy for certain things. Then the next thing you do is you come down here and you're going to choose your temperature settings. The TR7 is the only one that gives you a warm rinse, which is a great feature. And then your load size, you can also go to medium. So small, medium, large, or auto. Auto will auto detect. If you say, I want to do one washcloth and a large, 
you have that option, you have that power. It's nice to have a washer that obeys your commands. So uh, soil level, you get to choose. If it's super dirty, this is going to be very helpful. It'll make sure that gets everything clean. I love the timer because it gives you a true countdown. You can add a soak, that's going to add some time or an extra rinse, you'll see the time change so you know how long it's going to take. As it's going, you'll see a true countdown, you know how much is left. Here's one of my favorites though, is the delayed start. You can get everything ready and then say one, two, three, four, five hours later, I want it to run. That way if you wanna run it in the middle of the night so you're not affecting the evening shower or something like that, great feature. It also has a pre-wash and a speed cycle this is cool so you can turn your signal off if you want it tells you the status lights here you choose start very straightforward and very simple this is a very durable pad they say that this is tested for one million impressions you can push it a million times before you have a problem with the button now i like this electronic package better than the tr5 or the TC5. They have electronics that are open behind the board. This is all in one package. It's got all the electronics right here. This board, last time I checked, was like $300, maybe $400 now to replace the board if you had to. So seven year warranty covers everything, lid to legs. And if you have to replace the board out of warranty, uh, it's plug and play. It's very simple. You'll know if it's the board when it begins to go out. Uh, it gives you true error codes. So you don't have to turn knobs and count the flashes and the dings to try to figure out what, how to troubleshoot. It'll give you a true error code. So that's an overview of the TR7 control panel. That is the best washer as far as I'm concerned. I do recommend it. A lot of people like the TR5s because it looks simpler, but this is not a mechanical knob it is electronic there are electronics behind here and you have the same thing with the classic now the classic is more aggressive because it has that transmission but frankly people don't need an aggressive washer today they just need the tr7 i hope this helps you and if you have any questions let me know